This is the listening test for levels from 3 to 5 of the Vietnam 6 level language proficiency test. There are three parts to the test. You will hear each part once. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have five minutes at the end of the test to transfer your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any question now because you must not speak during the test. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. I was a small child when I left Vietnam and moved with my family to live in America. For me and my little brother, it didn't take long before we felt American. But for my parents and two older sisters, it was a different story. The biggest problem for my mother was the language. We were living in New York, and although there were quite a lot of Vietnamese families near us, they didn't work in the stores. This meant my mother had to take me with her when she went shopping, and I was usually at school. For my father, the most important thing when we arrived was to find a job. Luckily, he had friends who knew us in Vietnam, and they helped him get a job in a factory. It was hard for him to do that sort of work. In Saigon, he had been a doctor. My two older sisters went to high school. They worked hard and did well, and the school gave them extra English lessons. Even now, though, they speak with Vietnamese accents. My brother and I are lucky. We may look Vietnamese, but we speak with American accents. My family found the way of life very different. In Vietnam, my mother used to spend a lot of time visiting her sisters and brothers and looking after her mother and father. She feels quite lonely now. She says that in America you live inside your house, but in Vietnam... You take your house outside onto the street and share your life with everybody. I don't remember that, but I do find the winters are quite hard to put up with in New York. It's very cold and snows a lot. My mother still wears traditional Vietnamese clothes at home and always cooks us rice and noodles. <laughs> I must admit, I prefer burgers and chips. <laughs> Although my friends <laughs> like to visit us, I often feel a bit embarrassed by my parents' way of life. They don't understand Americans, and I think I am more American than Vietnamese now. I suppose it's sad for them to have such a strange daughter. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. In American schools, almost every classroom is a mix of boys and girls. However, it was not always this way. In the past, schools did not teach girls subjects like science and math. In 1972, a law called Title IX was made in America. It gave girls an equal chance at education. Since then, boys and girls have been taught together. Recently, though, some schools are reconsidering separating classes. This is different than in the past, however. Girls still learn the same subjects as boys. They just study without boys in the classroom. Why? Well, scientists know that boys and girls learn differently. They also behave differently in the classroom. Boys are louder and more confident. They like to talk and show what they know. In general, girls are quieter. They prefer to listen and think carefully before they give their answers. When boys and girls are together, the boys can be too dominant. Also, boys and girls can bother each other. Instead of thinking about the lesson, they think about each other. In a separated classroom, they behave better and can focus on studying. Another reason for separated classes is that boys and girls often like different things. For instance, boys prefer stories with action and adventure. In an all-boys English class, the teacher can choose books that will be interesting to boys. This way, they will be more excited about the stories. Not all the classes are separated, just the main subjects, like English, math, science, and social studies. Still, 
Some teachers think that separate education is not good. They worry that boys and girls will not learn how to work well together. Right now, less than 600 schools are trying separate classrooms. Time will show if it is a good idea or something that should be left in the past. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Hi, I'd like to welcome all of you to the International Student Orientation at Norwalk College. I hope that your travels from your home country have been easy and that you are all settling in well. I believe I've met everyone,、um, but just in case, I'm the director for International Student Affairs, the person you can come to if you're having problems with your classes, your housing, visas. You're always welcome to stop by my office. We'll have several short workshops today, and we'll be talking about some common issues that international students face.、Um, the first one that I want to deal with is about、uh, communication, and in particular, nonverbal communication. Now, all of you have been studying English for some time. You have a good vocabulary, and you probably know all about verb tenses and modals and can ask directions and order from a menu. But communication is not only verbal. That is, talking is not the only language we use to communicate. Another way we communicate is through nonverbal communication or body language. The term body language means the movements we use and the facial expressions we have, like smiling or frowning, the way we sit or stand, the way we touch or look at someone,、um, the, the distance we stand from another person. Some psychologists say that more than 60% of our communication. Is actually done through body language. We do it without thinking or without ever having been specifically taught what the gestures or expressions mean. The problem is that body language is a little bit different in each culture, and this can often cause some problems with communication.、Uh, here's an example:、um, in many places, it may be a little rude or disrespectful to look at another person directly in their eyes as you talk with them. So many international students will avoid this eye contact, but in America we expect it.、Uh, we think of eye contact as a sign of honesty and straightforwardness.、A、American parents actually encourage their children to look people in the eye when speaking. Just imagine a conversation where an international student was trying to be respectful by not looking into the eyes of her American classmate. The American might wonder. Why her classmate wouldn't look directly at her, and the international classmate would be wondering why she was being stared at. The end result is an awkward and frustrating interaction. Oh, here's another one.、Uh, Americans shake hands firmly when they greet each other, because to Americans a firm handshake signifies strength and power, but a soft or limp handshake is considered a sign of weakness. In some cultures. Handshakes are less common, or a gentle, soft handshake is acceptable. So students need to know that when shaking hands, it's important to be firm. In America, a thumbs up sign, a, a thumb raised in the air. That is the end of part three. Now you have five minutes to check your answers and transfer your answers onto the answer sheet.